we start saying, I'm going to do what the spirits say do. You know, we sing, start moving. And the way we knew what we was going to do, somebody going to hit a song and we join in and we knew we was going left or right. And if the spirits say do, do, oh Lord, do what the spirits say do. I go to jail if the spirits say go. It's okay, y'all, we going to jail today. We know that then. Go to jail if the spirits say go. Let's let get ready, y'all. We get ready to go fill it up. But they start beating us. Lord, I go to jail if the spirits say go. You're about to experience a big chunk of history right now. Dorothy Tellman, who served the south side of, of Chicago as alder woman for 25 years, a quarter of a century. But long before that, <laughs> she was part of history as a civil rights activist here in Chicago in our home state of Alabama. We want to welcome you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much you. for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. You know, let's talk about this movie, a okay. big deal. First of all, the fact that there is a movie to yes. mark this. Yes. That's a good thing, right? I think so. I think that at least it started the dialogue. I think the director did a wonderful job in her direction, the way she directed the film. Uh, but we have to understand that it's 80% fiction uh, and 20% um, truth, or maybe 90% fiction. I really? Mean, give or take. When you sat down and watched this movie, what were you thinking in your mind? Did it take you back there or did it not? Of course. Um, when I saw the young girls uh, get bombed in Birmingham, I immediately thought about Reverend Jane Bevel, uh, who was, uh, had really was responsible for taking those children marching in Birmingham. Uh, Reverend Bevel was... Um, he, he, he left SNCC and he joined Dr. King with SCLC mm -hmm. and he began, he's the one that wrote the Alabama uh, Voters Project. Mm -hmm. He and Diane Nash, who was his wife, and they came and got us out of uh, Montgomery. So that's what I was thinking about. So he started it all, basically. Well, he, he, Dr. King, the movement from Montgomery to Birmingham, right. uh, Jim Lawson introduced uh, Reverend Jane Bevel to Dr. King. He put them together. I see. And uh, Reverend Bevel and Diane uh, Nash Bevel and uh, Bernard Lafayette and John Lewis and all of them, they started SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. But and Dr. Reverend, King was the Southern Christian, Southern Leadership, Christian Conference. Leadership Conference. So uh, Reverend Bevel joined SCLC. So when people said it was conflict, not really, because they came from SNCC. So I thought about Reverend Bevel, and I thought about Diane Nash Bevel. Uh, when they, they wrote the vote in the Alabama Voter Project, and they wanted to launch a voter project yeah. in Alabama, and Selma had not been chosen. So when I'm looking at the movie, I'm thinking about a lot of things that yeah. happened. You're from Montgomery. Yes. You were 16 years old when you joined this. I was 16. 16 years, I was in high, was my last year high school, uh, and I, when I was sent to Selma on behalf of Southern Christian Leadership Conference. At 16 years old. But what you got to remember is I grew up in the movement. Okay. I, at nine years old, I met Dr. King at the Hope Street Baptist Church uh, in Montgomery, Alabama during the bus boycott. My grandmother carried me to the Hope Street Baptist Church to hear Dr. King speak. I knew Mrs. Park. We knew all of the people. I was part mm -hmm. of the MIA, the Montgomery Improvement Association. We had to have an NAACP card, and when my grandmother carried me, I didn't know until I was really grown, maybe 20 years later, uh, I thought about why my grandmother carried me, because she could not explain to me why I couldn't sit mm. on the front of the bus. She wanted to show you. Right, and I heard Dr. King speak that night. I got baptized in this movement, and I think at nine years old, that decision was made that I was going to be fighting on behalf of my people for the rest of my life and now. And you did. Yes, and when Bevel, and Diane came to Montgomery. Bevel said to us, said, well, you know your mama can't pee in the weed. We said, what are you talking about? Well, we knew that we had experienced racism. Uh, we knew our parents experienced rape, lynching, and all the other things. And we knew that we didn't even discuss voting in my house because nobody in my house voted because they couldn't vote. Right. That was not even discussed. So Bevel said, we got to liberate your mom and your grandparents. So all of us as youth, we joined this movement. And in Montgomery, we were going to jail every day. Every we, day. In Montgomery. We was fighting real hard. Nope. You, it didn't bother you to go didn't to jail. Bother us. It, was, it didn't bother us because we was fighting for something that was right. We wasn't sure what city or what, what county we were going to in Alabama. SNCC was already there, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. So Jim Clark, who got nervous because of all the commotion that was going on in Montgomery, he issued that no more than two colors could be on the street and sell them after the dark. So that's when we decided, Bevel said, well, we're going to put more than two colors on the street after dark. We're going to put a lot. But remember that Diane Nash, who was Diane Bevel then, but she's back in her main name, Diane said that uh, when we present this, we have to present, present a declaration of freedom to Wallace. 
So the whole thing was to come up with where we were going to present it from. Governor. Yeah. To Governor Wallace. Mm -hmm. where, where are you going to present this from? And uh, what we did was when, when, when Clark issued that, that's when we decided to go to Selma. What was Dr. King to you? What, you know, you met him. You, <laughs> you just saw a video of him, yeah. film of him, yeah. and you were saying he was like your father. I yeah, mean, yeah. And you said he was so sweet. Tell he me was. about Dr. King. Oh, well, Dr. King, I met him at nine. Uh, when he came to Montgomery, this colored boy, they said this colored boy that came from Atlanta, he came, he took over Vernon John place at um, Dexter Avenue. And of course, my minister, Reverend Fields, was very active in Montgomery. Our church got bombed in Montgomery because he was very active. So when, Dr. when I met Dr. King at nine years old, I, I mean, I was just like, here's this man so strong speaking on my behalf that I, I just kind of just, he was like, a deity to me at that mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm. I never knew that I would become a part of his staff, but to sit in a room as we strategize and as we talk and to see the human Dr. King, Dr. King liked to joke a lot. And he loved, you know, we joked about death. We really did. In the movie you saw what Coretta said, don't joke like that, Martin, save that for your staff. Was that real? That was real. Because we would say, okay, if I die, you know, don't cry. Organize a movement on this. Uh, if you die for freedom, we really talked about death. We talked about death all the time. We talked about what would we do if something happened. So Dr. King was like, he was very serious. Dr. King, you, Dr. King, you didn't see one Dr. King here and another one there. Dr. King loved his people. He loved black people. And he was very strongly, he believed in God. And Dr. King told us that, you know, uh, that if we want to be Christians, we have to do as Jesus did. And Jesus was one of the greatest revolutionaries he was. So he was a great man. He, yeah. And I came and he brought me to Chicago. Well, we're going to talk about what happened when you came to Chicago okay. after this. We're going to have more from Dorothy Tillman when we get back after this.